The fickle crew have deserted Reginald and sworn allegiance to his rival. And all forsooth, because he has glanced with passing favor on a puling milkmaid. Fools, of that fancy he will soon weary. And then I, who alone am faithful to him, shall reap my reward. But do not dally too long, Reginald, for my charms are ripe, Reginald, and already they are decaying. Better secure me, ere I have gone too far. <laughs>
the tale. How rapturously these maidens love me, and how hopelessly. Oh, patience, patience, with the love of thee in my heart. What have I for these poor mad maidens but an unvalued pity? Alas, they will die of hopeless love for me, as I shall die of hopeless love for thee. Sir, will it please you read to us? Yes, child, if you will. What shall I read? One of your own poems. One of my own poems? Better not, my child. They will not cure thee of thy love. Oh, Mr. Bunthorne used to read us a poem of his own every day. And to do him justice, he read them extremely well. Oh, did he, sir? Well, who am I that I should take upon myself to withhold my gifts from you? What am I but a trustee? Here is a decolette, a pure and simple thing, a very daisy, a babe might understand it. To appreciate it, it is not necessary to think of anything at all. Let us think of nothing at all. Gentle Jane was as good as gold. She always did as she was told. She never spoke when her mouth was full, or caught blue bottles their legs to pull, or spilt plum jam on her nice new frock, or put white mice in the eight-day clock, or vivisected her last new doll, or fostered a passion for alcohol. And when she grew up, she was given in marriage to a first-class earl who keeps his carriage. I believe I'm right in saying that there is not one word in that decolette which is calculated to bring the blush of shame to the cheek of modesty. Not one. It is purity itself. Here's another. Teasing Tom was a very bad boy. A great big squirt was his favorite toy. He put live shrimps in his father's boots and sewed up sleeves of his Sunday suits. He punched his poor little sister's heads and care and pepper their four-post beds. He plastered their hair with cobbler's wax and dropped hot hippies down their backs. The consequence was he was lost totally and married a girl in the corps de ballet. Oh! Marked you how grandly, how relentlessly the damning catalogue of crimes strode on till retribution like a poisoned hawk came swooping down upon the wrongdoer. Oh, it was terrible. Oh, sir, you are indeed a true poet, for you touch our hearts, and they go out to you. This is simply cloying. Ladies, I am sorry to appear ungallant, but this is Saturday, and you have been following me about ever since Monday. I should like the usual half holiday. I shall take it as a personal favor if you will kindly allow me to close early today. Oh, sir. Do not send us from you. Poor, poor girls. It is best to speak plainly. I know that I am loved by you, but I never can love you in return, for my heart is fixed elsewhere. Remember the fable of the magnet and the churn? But we don't know the fable of the magnet and the churn. Don't you? Then I will sing it to you. <laughs> in a hardware shop and all around was a laughing crop of scissors and needles nails and knives offering love for all their lives but for i the magnet felt no whim though he charmed i it sharp not him from needles and nails and knives he returned for he said his love on a silver churn a silver churn a silver churn. He is most aesthetic, very magnetic, and he took this turn. If I can wheedle a knife or a needle, why not a silver churn? He is most Steel express surprise, the needles open their well drilled eyes, the pen knives fell shut up, no doubt. The scissors declared themselves cut out. The kettles they boiled with raised his head. While every nail went off its head, and hither and thither began to roam, till a hammer came up and drove them home. It drove 
them home. While this magnetic peripatetic lover he lived to learn, by no endeavor can magnet ever attract a silver churn. At last they are gone. What is this mysterious fascination that I seem to exercise over all I come across? A curse on my fatal beauty, for I am sick of conquests. Archibald! Patience! I have escaped with difficulty from my Reginald. I wanted to see you so much that I might ask you if you still love me as fondly as ever. Love you? If the devotion of a lifetime... Hold! Unhand me or I scream! If you are a gentleman, pray remember that I am another's. But you do love me, don't you? Madly. Hopelessly, despairingly. That's right. I never can be yours, but that's right. And you love this bun form? With a heart whole ecstasy that withers and scorches and burns and stings. It is my duty. Admirable girl. But you are not happy with him. Happy? I am miserable beyond description. That's right. I never can be yours, but that's right. But go now. I see dear Reginald approaching. Dear Reginald. Farewell, dear Archibald. I cannot tell you how happy it has made me to know that you still love me. Oh, dear. Sir, this language to one who has promised to another. Oh, Archibald. Think of me sometimes, for my heart is breaking. He is so unkind to me, and you would be so loving. Loving? Advance one step, and as I'm a good and pure woman, I scream. Farewell, Archibald. Stop there. Think of me sometimes. Advance at your peril. Once more, adieu. <laughs> Archibald. With dear Archibald. Upon my honor, this is too much. A great deal too much. Do be quiet, crushed again. I think he is the noblest, purest, and most perfect being I have ever met. But I don't love him. It is true that he is devotedly attached to me, but indeed I don't love him. Whenever he grows affectionate, I scream. It is my duty. I dare say. So do I. I dare say. Why, how could I love him and love you too? You can't love two people at once. Oh, can't you though? No, you can't. I only wish you could. I don't believe you know what love is. Yes, I do. There was a happy time when I didn't. But a bitter experience has taught me. Oh.
Everything has gone wrong with me since that smug-faced idiot came here. Before that, I was admired. I may say loved. Too mild. Adored. Do let a poet soliloquize. The damosels used to follow me wherever I went. Now they all follow him. Not all. I am still faithful to you. Yes, and a pretty damosel you are. No, not pretty. Massive. Cheer up. Oh. I will never leave you. I swear it. Oh, thank you. I know what it is. It's his confounded mildness. They find me too highly spiced, if you please. <laughs> and no doubt I am highly spiced. Not for my taste. No, but I am for theirs. But I will show the world that I can be as mild as he. If they want insipidity, they shall have it. I'll meet this fellow on his own ground and beat him on it. You shall, and I will help you. You will? Jane, there's a good deal of good in you after all. <laughs> Compliment I roam the home. Say hey to you, good day to you, and that's what I shall say. Your style is much too sanctified, your cut is too canonical. Say ha to you, ha ha to you, and that's what I shall say. I was the beau ideal of the morbid young aesthetical. To doubt my inspiration was regarded as heretical. Until you cut me out with your placidity ventical. Sing boo to you, poo poo to you, and that's what I shall say. Sing boo to you, poo poo to you, and that's what I shall say. Sing hey to you, good day to you, sing boo to you. Like this, 
You hold yourself like that. By hook and crook, you try to look perpendicular and flat. To cultivate the trick, rigidity of limb. You want to get a man in a head and form your style on him. Yes, it's quite clear that our only chance of making a lasting impression on these young ladies is to become as aesthetic as they are. No doubt. The only question is how far we succeeded in doing so. I don't know why, but I've an idea that this is not quite right. I don't like it. I never did. I don't see what it means. I do it, but I don't like it. My good friend, the question is not whether we like it, but whether they do. They understand these things. We don't. Now, I shouldn't be surprised if this is effective enough at a distance. I can't help thinking we're a little stiff at it. It would be extremely awkward if we were to be struck so. I don't think we shall be struck so. Uh, perhaps we're a little awkward at first. Uh, but everything must have a beginning. Oh, here they come. Tennyson! Oh, Sapphira, see, see. The immortal fire has descended on them. And they are of the inner brotherhood, perceptibly intense and consummately utter. How Botticellian, how Fra Angelican. Oh, Art, we thank thee for this boon. I'm afraid we're not quite right. Not supremely, perhaps, but oh, so all but. Oh, Sapphire, are they not quite too all but? They are indeed jolly utter. I wonder what the inner brotherhood usually recommend for cramp. Uh, ladies, uh, we will not deceive you. Uh, we are doing this at some personal inconvenience with a view of expressing the extremity of our devotion to you. Uh, we trust that it is not without its effect. We will not deny that we are much moved by this proof of your attachment. Yes, your conversion to the principles of aesthetic art in its highest development has touched us deeply. And if Mr. Grosvenor should remain obdurate, which we have every reason to believe he will... Oh, I wish they'd make haste. We are not prepared to say that our yearning hearts will not go out to you. Buy six and for threes, rapture. Oh, it's extremely good. For beginners, it's admirable. The only question is, who will take who? Oh, the Duke chooses first as a matter of course. Oh, I couldn't think of it. You're really too good. <laughs> Nothing of the kind. You are a great matrimonial fish, and it's only fair that each of these ladies should have a chance of hooking you. <laughs> Sapphire, I choose to marry, I shall be fixed up for life. Then the colonel need not tarry, Angela can be his wife. In that case, unprecedented single, I shall live and die. I shall have to be contented with a heartfelt sympathy. You have to be contented with a heartfelt sympathy. In that case, unprecedented single, I shall live and die. I shall have to be contented. He will have to be protected with a heart and sympathy. He will have to be protected with a heart and sympathy. I determine at my wedding she'll appear Decking diamond on her in major Then can take some beer In the case of president in single I shall live and die I shall have to be contented With the heartfelt sympathy I shall have to be contented With the heartfelt sympathy In the case of president in single I shall live and die I shall have to be contented With the heartfelt sympathy Neither I decide 
life. Sapphire then can take the colonel and she be the major's bride. In that case of precedent, it's single, I must live and die. I shall have to be contented with a heartfelt sympathy. It is very pleasant to be alone. It is pleasant to be able to gaze at leisure upon those features which all others may gaze upon at their goodwill. Ah, I am a very narcissus. It's no use. I can't live without admiration. Since Grosvenor came here, insipidity has been at a premium. <sighs> ah, he's there. Ah, oh, Bunford. Come here. Look. Very graceful, isn't it? Allow me. I haven't seen it. Yes, it is. Graceful. Oh, good gracious, not that. This. You don't mean that. Bah! I'm in no mood for trifling. And what is amiss? Ever since you came here, you have entirely monopolized the attentions of the young ladies. I don't like it, sir. My dear sir, how can I help it? They are the plague of my life. Dear Mr. Bunford. With your personal disadvantages, you can have no idea of the inconvenience of being madly loved at first sight by every woman you meet. Sir, until you came here, I was adored. Exactly, until I came here, that's my grievance. I cut everybody out. Oh. I assure you, if you could only suggest some means whereby, consistently with my duty to society, I could escape these inconvenient attentions you would earn my everlasting gratitude. I will do so at once. However popular it may be with the world at large, your personal appearance is highly objectionable to me. It is? Oh, thank you, thank you. How can I express my gratitude? By making a complete change at once. Your conversation must henceforth be perfectly matter of fact. You must cut your hair and have a back parting. Back pardon? A back parting, sir. In appearance and costume, you must be absolutely commonplace. No, pardon me. That's impossible. Take care. When I am thwarted, I am very terrible. I can't help that. I am a man with a mission, and that mission must be fulfilled. I don't think you quite appreciate the consequences of thwarting me. I don't care what they are. Suppose. I won't go so far as to say that I will do it. But suppose for one moment I were to curse you. <laughs> Very well, take care, take care. But surely you would never do that. I don't know. It would be an extreme measure, no doubt, but still... But you would not do it. I'm sure you would not. Oh, reflect, reflect. You had a mother once. Never. Then you had an aunt. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I see you had. Oh, oh, oh. By the memory of that aunt, I implore you to pause ere you resort to this last fearful expedient. <laughs> oh, Mr. Banform, reflect, reflect. I must not allow myself to be unmanned. It is useless. Consent at once, or may a nephew's curse... Hold! Are you absolutely resolved? Absolutely. Will nothing shake you? Nothing. I am adamant. Very good, then I yield. Ah. <sighs> You swear it? I do cheerfully. I have long wished for a reasonable pretext for such a change as you suggest. It has come at last. I do it on compulsion. Victory! I triumph!
When I go out of door, of damosels a score, or sign of burning and clinging, and any will follow me as before. I shall with culture taste, distinguish gems from paste, and hide it to diddle with rank as a needle if I pronounce it chaste. A, a most, most intense, intense young man, man, a soulful light young man, man, an ultra poetical, super aesthetical, out of the way young, young man. man. Conceive me if you can, an everyday young man, a drummer placed tight with a stick and a pipe and a half a black and tan, who thinks suburban hops, more fun than Monday pops, who's fond of his dinner and doesn't get dinner on bottled beer and chops. A commonplace young man, a matter of fact young man, a steady and solidly jolly bank holiday everyday young man, a Japanese young man. A blue and white young man, Francesco Rimini, Mimini, Pimini, je ne sais quoi, young man. A Chancery Lane young man, a Somerset House young man, a very delectable, highly respectable, threepenny bus young man. A pallid and thin young man, a haggard and lank young man, a greenery gallery, grove in a gallery, foot in the grave young man. A Sewell and Cross young man, a Howell and James young man, a pushing young particle, boss and exotical, Waterloo House young man. Conceive me if you can, a matter of fact young man, an alphabetical head. Medical every day, young man. man. Conceive me if you can. A matter of fact, young man. man. And I hope a medical fair is medical every day, young man. It is all right. I have committed my last act of ill nature, and henceforth I'm a changed character. La 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 la. Reginald, dancing? And what in the world is the matter with you? Patience. I'm a changed man. Hitherto, I've been gloomy, moody, fitful, uncertain in temper, and selfish in disposition. You have indeed. All that is changed. I have reformed. I have modeled myself upon Mr. Grobler. Henceforth, I am mildly cheerful. My conversation will blend amusement with instruction. I shall still be aesthetic, but my aestheticism will be of the most pastoral kind. Oh, Reginald, is all this true? Oh, quite true. Observe how amiable I am. But, Reginald... How long will this last? With occasional intervals for rest and refreshment, as long as I do. Oh, Reginald, I'm so happy. Oh, dear, dear Reginald, I cannot express the joy I feel at this change. It will no longer be a duty to love you, but a pleasure, a rapture, an ecstasy. My darling. But, oh, horror. What's the matter? Is it quite certain that you have absolutely reformed? That you are henceforth a perfect being, utterly free from defect of any kind? It is quite certain. I have sworn it. Then I never can be yours. Why not? Love, to be pure, must be absolutely unselfish. And there can be nothing unselfish in loving so perfect a being as you have now become. But stop a bit. I don't want to change. I'll relapse. I'll be as I was. Interrupted! <laughs> I'm a Waterloo House young man, a Sewell and Cross young man, a steady as Tolly Jolly Bank holiday every day young man. Angela, Ella, Sapphire, what, what does this mean? It means that Archibald the All Right cannot be all wrong. And if the All Right chooses to discard his citizen, it proves that his citizen ought to be discarded. Oh, Archibald, Archibald! I'm shocked, surprised, horrified. I can't help it. I'm not a free agent. I do it on compulsion. This is terrible. Go. I shall never set eyes on you again. Oh, I say. But, oh, joy. What's the matter? Is it quite, quite certain that you'll always be a commonplace young man? Always, I've sworn it. Why then, there's nothing to prevent my loving you with all the fervor as my command. Why, that's true. My Archibald. My patience. Crushed again. Cheer up, I am still here. I have never left you and I never will. Thank you, Jane. After all, there's no denying it. You're a fine figure of a woman. My Reginald. My Jane. Ladies, the Duke has at length determined to select a bride. I have a great gift to bestow. Approach such of you as are truly lovely. 
in personal appearance, you have all that is necessary to make a woman happy. In common fairness, I think I ought to choose the only one among you who has the misfortune to be distinctly plain. <gasps> Jay, Duke, crushed again. <laughs> Much debate eternal, I on lady decide. Sapia now may take the colonel and she be the major's bride. In that case, unprecedented single, I must live and die. I shall have to be contented with the tulip all in line. I have to be contented with the tulip all in line. 